more power to be given to districts. BSP launches life insurance offer. And NAMA says PNG government must send funds. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Tuesday's news. Opposition leader Belden Nama says the Prime Minister has made an unplanned and unrealistic statement on the deployment of 1,000 PNGDF and firefighters combined to assist in the Australian bushfires. Nama is donating 200,000 kina to Australia to assist families rebuild their homes and says the government needs to give assistance, especially now when many families are without homes. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister has responded to Belden Nama's statement, describing it as immature. Nama says PM's effort is not good enough and PNGDF troops along with firefighters do not have the experience to fight such bushfires. You want to commit 1,000 troops and firefighters to send to Australia. Firstly, you've got to ask yourself this question. Are these men and women trained to, you know, go into such disaster situation, to go and assist in such disaster situation? Have they been trained to be, to, to be able to assist in this kind of situation? For me, the answer is simple no. None of these people are experienced. You see how the Australian firefighters have become fallen victims uh, in these bushfires. Opposition leader Beldanama's statement coming after PM announced late Saturday night that 1,000 PNGDF and firefighters were on standby to assist in the bushfires on the invitation of the Australian Prime Minister. Nama stating that PNG and Australia have a special relationship like no other country and PNG should immediately assist with funds if needed. The uh, earthquake in the his own province, the Ella province, where Australians were fast to respond with aid. You know, I've, I have uh, tried to let the Prime Minister know that let's not try to take advantage of this kind of situation to uh, promote yourself. It's not about promoting, promoting yourself. We should be sending condolences and we should be trying to assist where we can. If we have a, a national disaster and emergency office, I'm sure there must be some funding in place. And we should be able to draw some funds from there, or if there are any funds, we should, Prime Minister should be calling an emergency cabinet to, uh, to, to convene an emergency cabinet to, us, uh, to try and assist the situation in Australia. And make some emergency funds available to be able to assist Australians. The opposition leader putting 100,000 kina from Vanimo National Disaster Funds and 100,000 kina from opposition funds to assist families rebuild their homes. The money that uh, I have committed to assist in this uh, disaster, uh, my office is uh, contacting the Australian High Commission. Uh, they will advise us uh, uh, who to raise the check to. Uh, they, and I think uh, by this afternoon we will we'll be able to find out who will raise the check to. The Prime Minister responding to the opposition leader's statement as immature and undermining PNGDF and firefighters' capability. MTV News has reached out to the Prime Minister for comments on whether preparations are underway with Australian High Commission to have 1,000 personnel deployed when requested by Australia, but has not received a response as of yet. Meanwhile, Vanuatu has donated 20 million Vatu, that is approximately 250,000 Australian dollars, to Australia. Nama commending the Pacific Island nation while also asking PNG to also donate what they can. The money, uh, I commend them. And that's the way we should uh, respond, uh, uh, Papua New Guinea should respond. And I, I don't think it's just about sending 1,000 troops. Uh, people who need to rebuild their homes. Uh, there is a need for, you know, food supplies, you know, water and this kind of thing. Yes, Australia is a big country, but a token from Papua New Guinea would be much appreciated. Adelaide Strokes, Kari National, MTV News.
The East New Britain provincial government launched its Australian bushfire appeal today in Kokopo. East New Britain Governor Nakikus Konga and Pomio MP Elias Kapavore are heading the appeal. The appeal is open to the East New Britain public to contribute cash and will continue all throughout the month of January. An initial contribution of 10,000 kina was put forward by Mr. Konga and Mr. Kapavore to mark the start of the humanitarian effort. Country Australia. Milikul sem planti ol donation ol support ol ol kim tulong a side lang housing, health, education. Sem leaders now in Brisbane down in Australia mo sem how by imi kan look sabi na talk 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 thank you, talk thank you kaya lang sa country way sa support imi all the time ikam inap now. So for that reason alone. Mi pala na plobeki mo kada sa alim longol because they are big brother, but in a small way, truthfully from my heart, mi appeal to people of Eastern Britain that we have to contribute something. This got a good cause, and that is to help the people of Australia. As part of its expansion into the insurance market, BSB subsidiary BSB Life Insurance PNG today launched its first endowment product, the Wantok Delight Life. Wantok Delight is the first life insurance package in the country that also offers regular payouts every three years through what is known as survival benefit. Meribatulo reports. Representatives from Bank South Pacific, its subsidiary, BSP Life PNG, and the regulator, Bank of Papua New Guinea, were present today for the launch of BSP Life PNG's life insurance product, One Talk Delight. This product, the first endowment product in the PNG market since the days of Quila Insurance. BPNG Assistant Governor Ellison Piddick was present for the product launch and commended BSP Life PNG for expanding into the life insurance market through One Talk Delight. According to Assistant Governor Pidik, this decision was one that would hopefully be a catalyst for more Papua New Guineans to take up life insurance cover. We, we, are, we are very happy to see that this, this, uh, this trend of development that's coming in the area of uh, insurance and especially life insurance. From the financial inclusion uh, point of view where the central bank is promoting financial inclusion, under the National Financial Inclusion Strategy, uh, which we've been promoting from 2016. One of our emphasis is to see if uh, insurance can be promoted widely. And so, uh, Governor and the bank uh, are very happy uh, of what BSP Life PNG is doing to roll out this particular product that will be made available to to Papua New Guineans. One Talk Delight has been tailored for the local PNG market. For BSP Life PNG country manager, Nelson Singh, a feature that stands out through their product is the survival benefit, regular payouts every three years for those covered under this product. With this offering, it is hoped that more Papua New Guineans can opt to take up life insurance instead of relying on the One Talk system. And uh, this product is, is not just a um, uh, protection product uh, or what, what you call a risk product, this is a savings product as well. So the intention of introducing this product is more so to enable the ordinary Papua New Guineans, the, the job starters, the, the small SMEs, to eventually have, have some form of uh, savings uh, opportunity. Uh, and as, as I mentioned in my, in my speech, uh, we need to make sure that uh, uh, as a business and as, as the regulator from a BPNG perspective, we need to talk a lot about uh, insurance. You need, people need to talk about it with their family. Um, death is imminent, we all know that, and uh, insurance will, will help in that time of need. The launch of One Talk Delight marks the first major milestone for BSP Life PNG in expanding its reach within the difficult PNG market a market that compared to other Pacific Island countries ranks low in life insurance uptake. According to BSP Group CEO Robin Fleming, One Talk Delight marks the first of a series of whole of insurance products aimed at a cross-section of the PNG populace. Over time, this will be a very 
not just profitable business for PNG, for BSP, but also a business which will help many of our customers, those in the informal sector, those in the SME sectors, those who aren't in a, in a formal sector employment which perhaps doesn't offer the types of insurance which um, larger organisations do offer, give them the chance to purchase an endowment product which has a lot of the other life benefits as well. Mirabatulo, National MTV News. Despite the tough economic environment, there are hopes that the situation can improve over the course of this year. Speaking to National MTV News, BSP Group CEO Robin Fleming says that whilst generally the economic outlook for PNG is for difficult months ahead for many businesses, there are also opportunities for economic stimulation if stakeholders of proposed major projects work together to progress negotiations within the first quarter of this year. From a business perspective, again, like many businesses, we're hoping that the LNG project agreements do get signed. Absent those, the execution of you know substantive agreements in in the LNG areas, I think that business conditions will be somewhat more difficult. That's certainly what our planning is aligned to. We have confidence that the the various sponsors and partners and the government will come to some agreement by the end of this month so that the PNG does have a, a better platform to be able to ensure that the, the objectives of the government can be achieved with a proper fiscal underpinning from investments from foreign direct investment. Prime Minister James Marape has announced the government's plans to empower provincial and district economies to better benefit the people. Speaking to departmental heads and heads of statutory bodies, the Prime Minister said it is time they work together to ensure services reach people in rural areas. According to the Prime Minister, over 80 percent of the country's population still lives in rural areas and over the years they have lacked basic government services. He said the government will end so services reach the people in rural areas. How do we give them respect? How do we bring our delivery arms and feet and legs closer to where our people are? So we will be working to do diagnostic into where in Wagani, do we displace from Wagani and migrate to the provinces? The Prime Minister also announced plans to have government systems in provinces and districts functioning to empower local economies. A child somewhere is doing grade 12 or will be doing grade 12 this year preparing to go to university. We must make that university a better place for him. A child somewhere is doing grade 6 but maybe is ill health, can't go to hospital somewhere. We must ensure that the aid post or the health centers or the hospital in the district or province or the referral hospital is ready for the child so that that child don't miss grade six. According to the Prime Minister, over 25 percent of the country's resources are used for salaries. However, the resource envelope for this year is insufficient according to the 2020 national budget. He said insufficiency must not be an excuse for service delivery. He challenged all government departments to improve their productivity this year consume over 25 percent of the salary every, every 25 percent of, of resource available every year in as far as our salary alone is concerned not to talk about the recurrent that goes on top to keep us functional and if we consume 25 percent of every resource that is available in our country it must bother our conscience to ensure that our productivity is raised to the highest standard the Prime Minister also stressed on the importance of state-owned enterprises as an integral part of the government to end so government services reach the people. For our state-owned enterprises who are amongst us, you're very important. You've been operating so long uh, to support our country functionally in the services that you provide. I encourage you also, whilst you're not mainstream public service, you have a functional supporting role to ensure our country is saved. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. We'll be back with more after these messages. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. Brian Bell Home Centers today gave away 250,000 kina worth of gift vouchers, closing its Christmas Wishes competition, which began in November last year. Brian Bell CEO Cameron McKellar announced the winners today and said there were more than 100 entries. One lucky shopper walked away with 30,000 kina in shopping vouchers. Brian Bell Home Centers has given away over 250,000 kina worth of prizes in its Christmas Wishes competition that started in November and was brought to a close on the 31st of December last year. Tobias Goal from Mendy, residing in Mount Hagen, was the first winner of a massive 30,000 kina. The grand draw winner is Tobias Goal of Mendy, Southern Highlands. Mendy! 15 other winners from home centers around the country were also drawn winning themselves a 10,000 and 3,000 kina voucher respectively. This following the weekly draws of 16 winners six weeks before November. CEO Cameron McKellar was pleased in announcing the winners today at the home center in Gordens. Uh, this is a very exciting morning for us at uh, Brian Bell. Uh, we get to announce the, uh, the winners of our Christmas draw. Uh, it's been a very exciting uh, Christmas period for us overall since November. We've started uh, our whole Christmas campaign and today it sort of culminates in the, uh, in the grand prize uh, winners being uh, announced. The competition was exceptional, having more than 10,000 entries in the competition. The CEO thanked the customers for their entries and for their support. It's been an exceptional uh, campaign for us and our customers have really helped support making Christmas uh, great uh, for 2019. Uh, all in all, we will have given away at the end of uh, uh, today's program 254,000 kina in, uh, in uh, gift prizes uh, to our customers and uh, we're delighted to be able to give as much back as we possibly can. The winners will be informed by the media and by Brian Bell for their prizes for them to collect. Benjamin Manimbi, National MTV News. Residents of Gordon today expressed their views as to why vendors are doing marketing outside of the newly built Gordon's formal markets. High fees and lack of customers are said to be the main reasons. Gordon youth leaders have suggested ways to improve marketing for both vendors and customers in Gordon's. Early November last year, NCD witnessed the opening of the 30 million Kina, first of its kind, two-storey Gordon's formal market, initiated by NCD and the New Zealand government. But while it has been open for business, there are vendors trading outside of the market. Gordon's youth leader, Jack Kanu, said there's three points to the issue, with much stress on rehabilitating youths to ensure safety and security for customers and vendors alike. More inside, uh, inside space, flow, inside market. Um, cost, uh, cost this uh, people market there. Uh, um, uh, um, just uh, all, all put him uh, 35 kina low, one week low, but pay him this, uh, pay him tax go back and NCDC. Um, one. Uh, two, um, when all no go market inside because inside space, um, all to go um, online low, not lab, you know, online low noticed. Online lor nat lah pol kam nak sim pola bi mokra space inside pinis more time and seriously a credit international market lor noticed and but and my space thing and my sense more youths. The formal market, which is supposed to hold up to at least 2,000 vendors, now only has the first floor almost full. On behalf of the vendors outside of the formal market, Gordon's resident Newman Churchill made an appeal to decrease the market fee from 5 kina to 2 kina. Market clerks, they're getting 5 kina tax for all the vendors. Now I'm appealing to NCD the governor, just put it down to 2 kina so that they can be able to market and sell and make a good profit. Thank In partnership with NCD and the UN, a program, Petty Crime Stoppers, was activated, engaging youths to keep surveillance of Gordon's since last October. 
However, those youths are still awaiting payment for their services. Petty Crime Stroppers Supervisor Wallace Apasso said a solution to the formal market issue would be to bring various bus stops from Unagi Oval back to Gordon's and pay the Petty Crime Stroppers what they are due to help keep order in Gordon's. Why the people are complaining, especially the retailers in the market, for the customers, poor attendance. Is I as the resident, the way I see is uh, the bus stops has to bring it back to Gorens. Uh, NCDC did a tremendous job and uh, uh, engaged the youths from northeast, and they are controlling the place, the pets for the business and uh, and the lives of the people. Natasha Ovoy, National MTV News. A pilot project to register locals at the ward level in the Buang LLG Morbe province was launched by Waubulola MP and National Planning Minister Sam Basel yesterday. The project is a lead up to the census exercise this year. Basel says registering villages in the wards will help with census exercise and also for better planning. This day, now you absent. Wabulala MP and National Planning Minister Sam Basil visited the first three wards of the Buang LLG yesterday to roll out this registration project. Basil says this will allow better records of people who live and visit the wards in Buang, which is in the Bulolo district, Morabe province. The plan must now include him what he come in charge of record for Papua New Guinea government. Now he must give him money come direct. National Statistical Office head Michael Kumung says having records of villages at the ward level will allow for better project planning. I'm going to say boxer the leader. I'm going to like make sure this lamoral and must making one block and complete change long way. I'm going to like deliver them service long class long country blame. For the past several years. The Bulolo district has been partnering with the NID office to register people in the Wau Bulolo district. The ward level registration project is aligned with this NID project rollout. Basil stressed that people have to be registered and the process of registering people under the NID project will continue. NID, you may run in finish, you got some outstanding issues. Blow certificate, na card, some line in Oxim, na some line come up late. All in a register, me plop and make him mop up in the camp. So all the three wards which were visited were given birth and death registration books to start registrations. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Lay. The Lay City Authority will be banning street vending in the city to stop the sale of counterfeit products and to reduce petty crimes. That's according to Lay MP John Rosso. Meanwhile, some vendors said the ban on street vending is a threat to their livelihoods. They've called on the responsible authorities to provide a proper place where they could sell their products. The member for Lay John Rosso announced that there would be a ban on street vending in the city. Rosso said street sales should stop because it has created a lot of problems and difficulties for the residents of Lay, especially women and girls. Lay MP also said that street vending is just an avenue for selling cheap counterfeit products to be sold on streets in Lay. There's some real genuine people, but at the same time, the street vending is just an avenue for cheap Chinese or counterfeit products to be introduced and sold on the streets in Lay. It contributes to the filth, it contributes to the mess, it contributes to the general disorderly behavior of the city. It's just the three main shopping centers at the bus stops in Eriku, the bus stops in town, and the bus stops at the main market. That is where the normal average women and children go and come. They should be allowed to walk freely, not to be harassed by vendors, not to be stolen or beaten up by vendors and stuff. So I would not be doing my job if I condone such activities in the, in the city center. The issue of street vending in the city of Leh and other parts of the country, especially in unauthorized areas such as the streets, in front of supermarkets, offices and at the bus stops, has always been a concern for responsible authorities. Over the years, the ban on street vending was identified to be a solution to minimize problems and harassments on members of the public. According to some vendors of Lay, they weren't happy to the call on the ban of street vending in Lay. Lay MP 
kay no subscribe mi bailo wan kina misal im tukina lo meki wan kina profit do mi lo kay kela binut ina bo small provide one plan market one plan stop interest hand na moray you stop him you must lulu na normal side you provide him some blood chopo or some plan and something way in up long all benefit the stop yes you can stop him true sabos lo display you lugo some people to mas i think you no good lo you stop him lot of more land living here when people say these people are making a living they should also realize that these people selling vending in town are just using it to commit a lot of them are using it to commit uh, petty crimes harassing the hard working uh, public harassing the ordinary people going to work meanwhile lay city authority will be setting up shelters to accommodate smes operating on the streets in the city and discourage street vending We will also be looking at trying to conduct SME businesses and take away the places where they can sell arts and craft and take it away from and create proper avenues for them to sell their stuff in. But you must remember these are not arts and crafts they're selling. They're selling buy, they're selling cigarettes, they're selling cheap counterfeit products on the street for other people to make the money from, not from the vendors. The money goes to some uh, wholesaler sitting in his shop uh, somewhere else and they just use a post street vendor as an avenue to sell the fake counterfeit goods so please think think now we comment so uh, my job is firstly to the taxpayers and the people who uh, reside in lay not to support counterfeit products julie badui or national mtv news lay You're watching National MTV News. We'll take a short break here. When we come back, we'll bring you stories making headlines overseas. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas now, Australia's raging bushfire still continues to burn in New South Wales. 25 people have now died after the death of a 71-year-old man. It comes as insurance claims surpass $700 million dollars and are still climbing. From motel owners on New South Wales' south coast. Well, it used to be a thriving little town years ago. To farms in the state's southwest. I tried to put on a happy face, but I was having a little cry in the corner. All the way down to the beekeepers of Kangaroo Island in South Australia. The mood's one of resilience, grief and uncertainty. We have a community spirit here on Kangaroo Island that is not burnable. It hurts. It hurts to see this. And I don't want anyone to go through this again. Some scenes are surreal. This is a snowy mountain ski field. The resort raised, equipment melted. You prepare yourself for it, but you never really know how bad it's going to hit um, until you actually see it. The home of these artists succumbed to a blaze so strong, unfinished pottery didn't need a kiln. The fire actually finished off my work mm -hmm. and me. In Victoria, shop owners who rely on the summer holiday season are unsure if their businesses will survive. Today. We'd be lucky if we made $24. Our economy has been burnt. While farmers in remote areas are dealing with multiple blows, stock, feed and fences gone. Tankers can't reach many, so thousands of litres of milk is going down the drain. Going out into the ground, yep. It's not getting through to town, it's not getting through to the, the processor, it's just getting dumped. The government's vowed to help with billions of dollars in relief promised. But on Kangaroo Island, a reminder, money won't fix everything. Fires continue to rage, helpless victims in their path. I'm guessing you know, well over 50% of our koala population is gone. An estimated 50,000 koalas were living among the island's diverse wildlife. Amongst the devastation and uplifting tale, this joey rescued by a volunteer firefighter. We got you buddy, don't worry, I got you now. It had a little burns on its feet. A life saved, but with millions of hectares of scorched earth and a country still burning, it's a question of how many more will be lost. Meanwhile, in those remote areas where supplies are still struggling to get through, people are starting to become frustrated. And frustration is being felt much more widely as well when it comes to the conversation around the link between these fires and climate change. 
A searing summer of discontent. For one Australian government MP, the unprecedented bushfires caused simply by too many trees. Now we have our record fuel loads on the ground here. That's the, the bush that accumulates over the years. The explanation becoming nonsensical. But if you look at the maximum temperatures during the day when the fires, if you look at our long term, if you, if you look at our long term, well what, what causes the main thing of the fires is the build up of the fuel on the ground and the drought. And if if you look at our science, if you look at the long-term rainfall records in Australia, there is simply no trend. And then a fight back led by a meteorologist. Thank you. Thank you. So Australia have just had, in 2019, their highest year temperature-wise ever recorded and their driest year ever recorded. So you're not a climate sceptic, you're a climate denier. i got just got to say, wake up. Thank you. Wake up. Climate change and global warming are real mm. and for senior politicians in Australia to still pretend there's no connection is absolutely disgraceful. Back on the home front, a call for leadership. If a country like Australia fails to show, show leadership, we can hardly blame other nations for not likewise showing leadership in this area. In Victoria, a warning, this is the new normal. We have a need now. Uh, we should turn that into an important opportunity to be ready for the next one as well. Political action weighed in other ways too. Former Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott, a volunteer firefighter, turning up to help. Australian media pointing out the difference between Abbott and Prime Minister Scott Morrison. What about the people who have nowhere to live? With the fires tipped to intensify in the coming days, those questioning the role of climate change in them could face more heat. The recovery mission, including the newly deployed Australian military, is finally getting into areas that have been cut off by the bushfires. Among those sent to help is the HCMAS Adelaide. The Navy ship is ready with everything that's needed for an evacuation. From a Navy launch, the Adelaide is a reassuring sight. What we're doing is to uh, insert uh, liaison teams into um, isolated communities to determine what level of support may be required. Defence has hundreds of tonnes of resource. There's water, food, radios, generators. It's like a mobile town waiting to be deployed. Below decks, the stretchers are set up. 2,000 evacuees could shelter on board. We converted into Hotel Adelaide at the moment. It's a floating hospital too. Mark McGuinness is a South Coast man. Close to home, this deployment is personal. To be able to actually do it for real in support of our own country, that means a lot to all of us. When the ship arrived in Eden, this experienced crew of 400 was staggered at what they saw. It was a reality check for everybody. A chopper refuels, loading more supplies to be ferried ashore. South of the border in Malakuta, the Air Force-led evacuation continues. Many residents have now been stranded for a week. But a warning today from the Air Force Chief. My pilots are pros, but can't work miracles when the air is clogged with thick red smoke and visibility almost nil. The fire threat is only ever one hot day away from erupting into a new emergency. Today, hands across the water. More Kiwis and reinforcements from California. After the, the break, we'll take a look at some sporting updates in Shukai Sports. Don't go away. Shukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. Matthew Church's observation has found that the SPPNG Hunters need to work more as a team. Church has been with the team through the pre-season and is working on his training program, which is aimed at building a team that is able to back each other up and maximise on winning opportunities. Matthew Church, the new SPPNG Hunters head coach, has over the years seen the skill level of the Hunters players before joining the team. Upon his observation of the players, he's seen great potential with speed and endurance, a standout in the Hunters team. 
I have my own mindset of how I want to play um, and how I feel we can we can utilise the skills that we have and, and the unique skills. We're, we're we're pretty quick. We're pretty good with our evasion. So being able to preserve the space and play to space is is something that I've been looking at just for the for the first part. But he has seen that the Hunters have not been playing as a team, especially in the 2019 season. He described their game as one-dimensional. Looking back at some of their games they played last year, they were, they were pretty one-dimensional. They run hard and tackle hard, but they, they, they tend to do it solo. So we've been working on our attack and being able to move forward in numbers. He is yet to find time to go through all the statistics in the Hunters' dismal 2019 season, but he is not interested in the individual stats and is focusing more on the team dynamic. I tend to not look at stats from a you know, uh, from a game point of view in terms of like, oh, how many runs and stuff you did. It's, I'm more about how many, you know, support efforts that you've done. Things that people don't really notice that uh, make you a really good team member. So we'd be focusing a lot on those, those stats. What struck Church the most was the energy and stamina of the Hunters players in their inaugural season in 2014, something Church is looking to revive in the Hunters team. One thing that, that did strike me when the Hunters first came into the, into the competition was they are really energetic, so if they scored a try they ran back to the halfway as a group and that sets a real message to the, to the opposition to sit up and go, oh wow, these guys you know, are full on. So if we can, we can drive um, similar things like that where, where opposition are, are looking at us and we're really loud and aggressive with our, with our, with our vocabulary, then, um, then we're going to make an impression on them mentally and then hopefully we start making an impression on, on the scoreboard as well. Matthew Church's training regime is different from coach Michael Marum's and he is eager to improve the Hunters teamwork to its former glory. We'll write our own language and we'll get along well but we're, we're, we're bonding reasonably well. I'm pretty happy with it, how I'm getting along with the group and how, how they're responding to me. Freely Sukina National MTV Sports. After eight weeks of rest, SP Hunters and Kumuls forward Stanton Albert had his first training session yesterday. Albert, along with Enoch Maki and Terry Wapi, returned and are preparing for the 2020 Interest Super Cup season. After weeks of rest, getting back into training is always difficult for any athlete. For Stanton Albert, it was hard trying to keep up after getting back into training with the SP Hunters after eight weeks of rest. Stanton, Enoch Maki, Stanford Talita and Terry Wapi were part of the PNG Kumuls team. Stanton, Maki and Wapi returned for training. Stanton says, though the first day was tough, being a senior player in the team, he had to step up. It was tough to me and uh, I was looking forward for this one, so it was good. We both uh, like, keep pushing and stuff like that. So we don't want to let the young uh, boys down, so we're just pushing up. Yesterday's training session was also Stanton's first time training under new coach Matthew Church. Different coach, they have like different structures of trainings and different styles. So, like with Maroon was different than with uh, Matthew, which is different. So yeah, it's like it's a bit of uh, the most skills and stuff like that in the in the trainings, but uh, with the speed and stuff. That's why. He says he's happy with the team's preparations and is confident they will have a great 2020 season. It's pretty good, so uh, the boys were enjoying their trainings uh, for the past uh, last year. So Precision training, they were enjoying their training and they all were happy, so I think that's good. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. The head of sports in the nation's capital is concerned over the delay in information on the 8th PNG Games, which is scheduled for Mendy, Southern Highlands Province this year. This comes as a meeting of the Games organisers, which would determine the Games go ahead, failed last December. The Sports and Recreation Manager of the National Capital District Commission spoke of the PNG Games and the city's preparedness to send a team. Our primary focus is the PNG Games and we have the eight PNG Games coming up. We're not sure whether it's going to be this year or next year, subject to confirmations from the PNG Sports Foundation as well as the host organizing committee from the Southern Islands Province. Uh, in 2007, they won the bid to uh, host uh, PNG Games, the eight PNG Games. Uh, we have yet to know that, but in the meantime, 
time. Uh, this year we are definitely you know, focusing on many sports. There are about 28 sports that we try to uh, cater for. Noting it's a challenge when it comes to last minute announcements. There's a lot of logistical nightmare that is needed uh, in terms of preparations. Uh, if the PNG Sports Foundation uh, and, the, and, the, and the Games Council, which we are also part of the Games Council uh, in that regard as a member, uh, we want to make sure that you know we are advised in, in a good advance time. NCD sends the biggest contingent to the PNG Games and finishes in the top three every time they attend. The Southern Highlands won the bid to host the eight meeting in Mendy this year, with the local organizers giving assurance of their preparedness to host the event. The track is already under production as we are speaking in China and it will be arriving in January, February and by March we will have a track and uh, all the other little courts, uh, volleyball, you're talking about beach ball, you're talking about hockey, everything will be will be hosted and we're looking up to up about uh, 19 courts that will be hosted in Southern Islands and uh, we're looking at two or three districts that will be involved with one is Kagwa which will be hosting soccer and uh, Nipa will be hosting, uh, hosting uh, basketball. It's highly likely that the games will be moved after it was briefly noted in late December. Uh, the deferral at the stage is unofficial at the moment until the uh, council, executive council of the PNG Games meet uh, formally to uh, make that uh, endorse the decision and that decision will be passed through the vice minister to the prime minister responsible, uh, minister responsible for sports. Likely, that's likely that the games will be deferred uh, on the understanding that yeah, rescheduled, sorry, rescheduled. A meeting of the Games Council to determine the game schedule planned for the 21st of December 2019 never eventuated. Bradley Valenaki, National MTV Sports. Chukar Sports continues with more after these messages. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Welcome back to Chukai Sports. To football, the Star Mountain FC is hoping to win its third game this weekend after losing two games in the 2020 NSL season. Coach Clement Anisoni says the club is training hard to have some positive results in this weekend's game against FC Wawens. Star Mountain FC is in its second year of competing in the National Soccer League. With a scruffy start last year, coach Clement Anison says the team needs more improvement. Despite two losses against Ekari and VTS FC in the start of 2020 NSL, coach Anison is confident that the team will put an end to it come this weekend. have already played two games. Um, result didn't come our way, but it's all the first start. Uh, a bit shaky and we're trying to mold the players together so The team is comprised of players from Port Mosby and Tabubil. Coach Anisan is working closely at blending these players together to play better football. We have two groups of players, one from um, Star Mountain and the other group is from Port Mosby. So what we're working on is blending them and, and hopefully we should get results. Whilst the team struggles to play at the national level, Captain Zebedee Matan says the team needs to concentrate more on their playing structure. Couple, uh, the last two games, we try our best, but maybe our training or something like that. So today and onwards, we're going to push up with our training. Seems that our coach are very tough with us and we are into it. So. Star Mountain will play FC Wawens this weekend at the PNG Football Stadium. Suli Suli National MTV Sports. And that ends Shukai Sport. The weather details coming up next. Shukai Sport. Shukai Sport. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast in the southern region. Chances of thundery showers then fine in Port Moresby. 
partly cloudy with rain showers later in Daru. Rain showers and thunderstorms at times in Kerama, a few thundery showers, then cloudy in Alatau, cloudy with rain showers and thunderstorms in Popandita. In the Mamasi region, rain showers at times in Lei, rain showers and thunderstorms then cloudy in Medeng, cloudy with rain showers and thunderstorms in Wewak and partly cloudy with a few thundery showers in Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, cloudy with rain showers and thunderstorms in Lorengau, thundery showers at times in Kaviang, rain showers and thunderstorms in Kokopo and Rabao, cloudy with a few thundery showers in Kimbe and a few showers in Buka. And in the Highlands region, rain showers and thunderstorms, then morning fog right across the region in Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. And that's the National MTV News this Tuesday, 7th January 2020. On behalf of the entire MTV News team right around the country, pleasant viewing. Good night.